Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video and we're going to go ahead and get started with the basics of HTML. So first of all, let's talk about what exactly is HTML. Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it's the standard markup language for browsers such as Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox to display content. Now, web browsers can either use local storage, so your local HTML files to serve your documents, or they can receive them from a web server. And in the real world, you use HTML to build your website. Now, obviously, you also usually combine it with CSS and JavaScript, but we're primarily only going to focus on HTML for these first couple of videos, and then we're going to move on to CSS. So let's go ahead and get started in writing some HTML. So before we even get started, you want to make sure you have a text editor. So I would highly suggest you download Visual Studio Studio code. It's a very easy text editor to use. I really enjoy it and it provides so many features such as syntax highlighting. It also provides a lot of other extensions that you can just download. So just make sure you download Visual Studio Code for your operating system. It's a very easy installation. And once you've done that, you want to create a folder somewhere in on your desktop, on your documents folder, wherever. I'm going to go ahead and just create this inside my documents folder using the terminal. So I'm going to do mcdir HTML basics. And like I said, you don't really have to worry about using the terminal too much. But all I'm doing here is I'm changing my directory into HTML basics and I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code inside this folder. But you can simply just do file open folder and then find a folder in your file system. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. And first of all, let's start off by creating an index.html file. So at the very basic level, when we start off with HTML, we need to make sure we have the declaration tag. So doc type HTML. So this tells the browser what type of document to expect. If you don't include this declaration, browsers will try their best to depend on backwards compatibility to render your document. So to be safe, make sure you include this at the top. Okay, this is the HTML5 declaration. All right, so once you have your declaration header, you wanna make sure that you have a set of HTML tags. Now, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what tags are because you are gonna be using them literally all the time. So in HTML, there are a whole bunch of different tags that you can use such as HTML, body, head, title, and they all follow the syntax where you need to have angle brackets. So for example, I have less than symbol HTML and then greater than symbol. And this is my text editor that's auto-completing it, but this is the opening HTML tag. And everything, all of your content is going to go inside of it. So for example, if you wanted to write some text, everything's going to go inside of it. And then you need to close everything off by doing angle brackets. So less than symbol, forward slash, and then the same name of the tag that you're closing. And the HTML tag is the root of our document. Everything goes inside the HTML tag. All right, so after the HTML tag, we have a simple head tag. And the head tag is responsible for containing metadata. And metadata is just data that describes other data. So they can describe the document's language, the title, the character set, CSS styles, scripts, etc. So for example, if I wanted to give my document a title of let's just say Anson's tutorial, that would give our document a title. All right, so now I'm actually gonna show you guys how to open up your web page. So if you look over here, I'm in my folder right now, right? This is uh, HTML basics. And I can go ahead and just double click index. And you're gonna see right over here that I have my document over here, Anson's Tutorials. And I can go ahead and change the name of the title. So let's change it to Hello World. Now if I save, and if I refresh the document, Notice how the top of here, hello world, it changed to hello world. That's going to modify the title where you see on the tab bar over there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the head tag for now. We're going to move on. And if you wanted to link external CSS, you would use the link tag. And then you have to specify an HTML attribute, which we'll talk about later on. All right, so after the head tag, we have the body tag, which is basically just the body of our document. You can use headings, paragraphs, images, hyperlinks, etc. And there can only ever be one body element in an HTML document document. All right, so congratulations, you've just written your first HTML document and you simply wrote a document that has a title of Hello World. So let's now move on to a little bit more of the basics. So now that you know what an actual HTML document should look like. All right, so just a disclaimer, we're not going to go over every single thing that exists in HTML. There's far too many tags. We're only going to focus on the basic ones that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis if you're a front-end developer. All right, so before I even move on, uh, I want you guys to make sure you install an extension called Live Server. 
so it's this server over here you can just download this one there's a whole bunch but you can just download whichever but this is the one that i use as 5 million downloads and basically what it'll do is it'll reload your web page every single time you make a change so that way i don't have to keep refreshing it over and over again so we're going to click on open with live server and that's going to open up a server at port 5500 and so now every single time i make a change it's going to auto update so for example if i had an h1 hello world and if i save notice how it just appears over there i don't have to refresh every anything anymore so let me just actually move this over here and move this over here okay so that should be a lot better all right so now we have our h1 tags so h1 all the way up to h6 these are called headings and they basically allow to display title and subtitle like text in the browser so there are six levels so there's h1 there's h2 so this is h2 saving it that this is h3 and you can see that the h6 tag has the smallest font size out of all of them all right so that's pretty straightforward so we can have h1 tags display titles so let's say if i have a title such as recent blog posts okay i would probably want to use an h1 tag all right so the next common tag that you're going to be using are called paragraph tags so like an essay there are a block of text and paragraphs always start on a new line and browsers automatically add some spacing so notice how over here with this h1 tag there's actually some spacing on the left side and on the top side we're going to actually learn how to remove that spacing later on when we use css but for now don't worry about that so for example if i want to use a paragraph tag less than sign p and then greater than sign and again like i said my visual studio code it auto completes the tag for us but you would just have to do forward slash p so let's just say this is a paragraph and notice how it automatically starts on the next line even if i have this p tag that's right next to the h1 it's still going to start on the next line and they're pretty straightforward you can use this to display a bunch of text so we can just say my introduction i am a software developer okay pretty cool now there's also something called line breaks and they allow you to move on to the next line they're pretty straightforward so let's say for example if you want to move on to the next line but you don't want to create another paragraph tag if i did something like this uh this is the next line notice how it's on the same line so i can actually use a break tag so that's br so this is a line break tag and notice how it just moves on to the next line okay and there's also no spacing up and down as well and line break tags are empty tags so it does not need a closing tag like this so that's pretty good to know so there's also something called pre-formatted text so let's say for example if you want to display text in a pre-formatted way and we can use the pre tag to display them so for example if i want to go ahead and say hello world this is an html tutorial you can see that it's actually displayed in a different sized font and a different uh, font family and the nice thing about pre tags is that they actually preserve white space and line breaks so for example i can go all the way down here i am down here and look at where it is i am down here whereas with the p tag if we were to do this with a p tag let's just do hello down here and you can see that it doesn't preserve the white space or the line breaks at all so that's something cool about pre tags pre-formatted text and we can obviously change the font family and the font size if we wanted to and i'll give you guys a quick little sneak peek so let's just do a simple style attribute and let's just say font size let's give it a size of 50 pixels and notice how it just changes just like that so that's a little sneak peek with uh, some css styling but we're not going to worry so much about that in this video all right so after pre-formatted text there are also text formatting tags quite often you might not want to display everything in just one font or sometimes you might want bold text or italic text or underlined text so we actually have certain tags that can do that for us so let's say for example if i wanted to type in bold font or if i wanted like so let's say for example if i wanted my text to be displayed in a bold format i can go ahead and say this is a bold font and you can see that the weight of this font let me zoom in a little bit that'd be better you can see that it's actually bold compared to our paragraph tag there's also strong text which typically represents important text so let's just say this is strong text and it kind of looks very similar to bold and there's also italic text so this is italic and of course we can also combine 
the we can also combine tags as well so if i want to have italicized and bold font you can see right up here it says both italicized and bold and we can do the same thing with strong as well there's also emphasize text so this is emphasized okay and this is a little bit more uh darker there's also mark so notice how with every single tag that i'm using it's literally just the name of the tag wrapped inside angle brackets and then the closing tag right over here is the one with the forward slash okay and this is just marked text so you can see that the text is marked and then there's also small text small text there's also deleted text, so... And at this point, I'm just really showing you a whole bunch of different HTML tags. But that's pretty straightforward with uh, with formatted text. Now let's move on to links. So to display links, you use the A tag. So that's A. And then we can go ahead and give our link some kind of text. Let's just say Google. Notice how nothing happens right now. That's because we need to actually give our A tag an attribute. Okay, now attributes are something that we're going to talk more specifically in the next part of this video. But basically we need to specify the href attribute, which stands for hyper text reference. And we're going to have to pass it a link. So a URL. So HTTP google.com. Okay, now if I save it, notice how over here, if I hover over it, it's going to give me my cursor as a pointer. And if you look at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the bottom, it says google.com. If I click on it, it's going to take me to google.com. And we can also have our links direct us to local HTML files as well. All right, so let's just say, for example, if I want to display an image, I would use the image tag, so IMG. And then we also need a source attribute. And I'm just going to pass in the URL to the dental logo. And you can see right over here that it's just really large, but we're going to use CSS to change it up a little bit but we don't actually necessarily need to use css we can actually just use the width attribute so i can change this to 500 or maybe 250 to make it a little bit smaller maybe 150 that'd be better all right and that's pretty straightforward and with uh, the image tag there's also the alt attribute so we can just say deno and this basically will display some text in case of the image is not rendered or in case of the image was not found, it'll display this broken image uh, icon over here and it'll just give you the alternate name that represents this resource. Now there are also tables in HTML. Sometimes you might need to display tabular data. So you can use tables for this. So to create a table, you use the table tag and then let's go ahead and give it a table row. So the TR tag stands for table row. Okay, obviously tables have their rows. So let's give it a couple of rows. And now with each row, we need to use the table header tag. So that's TH and we'll just say name. Notice how it's going to appear as name and let's give another table header. So let's just do age and let's just do TH gender. Okay, so this is our table header. This is one row and in every other row, we're going to want to display the actual data. So we're going to have another table row. So this is going to be the second row and we're going to have table data. So this is now our data, not the actual header. So let's just say Anson. Okay, see how it appears right under name and then TD. So for age, this is the second column now. We're going to do 22. And then for gender, we're going to do male. And there you go. So we can also add another table row as well. We can add as many table rows as we want. And then TD male. So have a nice, cool looking table. And of course, we can also give it styles as well. But we're not going to worry about that part right now. All right, now there are also lists in HTML. So let's say if you need to display a collection of information such as recipe ingredients, a list of books to read, grocery lists, etc., you can use lists. So there are a couple types of lists. There's unordered lists. So we use the UL tag. And then inside the UL tag, we're going to use the LI tag, which represents the list item. Okay, so LI stands for list item. UL stands for unordered list. And the reason why it's called an unordered list is because there's no order. And you'll see the difference between unordered list and an order list. So let's just say, uh, let's just do this. First of all, let's give it an H1 or H2 grocery groceries list. And let's go ahead and say, I need to buy some coffee. Okay. I need to buy some cereal. I need to buy some oatmeal as well. Got to buy some milk. Okay. So that's our grocery list right there. Now let's do an ordered list. So let's say we have a certain list of tasks that we need to execute in order. So let's just say to do. So to do list, and we're going to use an ordered list by using the OL tag. So that's OL. And then inside we have the list items. So that's LI. So LI, 
let's just say eat breakfast so you can see right over here with the ordered list we have actually the number one right next to it and that should definitely be straightforward with what order lists are and what's the difference between ordered and unordered list and then write some code and now there's also description lists. So for example, we can use DL for description list and inside we can go ahead and do DT. And then this is going to be the term. So let's say for example, study for math. See over here it says study for math. And now we're going to do DD. So this is going to be the description. It's going to describe our term. So we're going to go ahead and say study for calculus. And you're going to see right over here, it has this indentation down there. And we could probably do that again. So study for linear algebra now let's go into another a dt it's another term so let's do study for computer science study for systems programming and then let's also do study for object oriented programming and there we go those are description lists all right, and quite often as a developer, you're going to need to write some notes or document some things down that can allow you to keep track of the features that you're implementing. So comments allow you to write notes directly in the same file without it being interpreted by the browser in our case. So comments are common in all programming languages, but in HTML, you can simply write a comment by just doing less than symbol, exclamation mark, hyphen, hyphen. This is a comment. And then closing it with hyphen, hyphen, greater than symbol. So for example, over here, I can write a comment saying that this is a description list. Notice how these comments are not being displayed in the browser. They're being ignored. All right, now let's just say, for example, we have all of our HTML elements over here. What if we wanted to wrap them inside some kind of container? So that way we don't have them all just like at the top level, like just right inside the body tag. We might want to wrap them inside a parent element. So fortunately, we have something called divs and we can simply take our div and we can wrap every one of our elements inside of it. We can start nesting elements. So if I want to put an H1 tag inside this div, I can just do something like hello world and now display inside over here. And let's just say I also want paragraph. So let's just say my my favorite programming languages. So we have a simple paragraph over there. Let's say we wanted to put an unordered list of all of our favorite languages. So let's just do an H3 languages. So a little bit redundant, but just trying to show you guys how you would be able to structure your HTML elements. So let's just say Python. We can put whatever we want. We can even put divs inside of a div so let's just say for example treat this div as the parent component of all of these three elements because we have the h1 the p and then we have h3 and we also have a ul these are all child components or child elements of the div which is a container you can think of it like a container like i said we can put another div inside here and we might want to wrap other elements inside this particular div and obviously if we were to put content inside over here it wouldn't really look any different this is where we want to use css to apply styles maybe we want to put something on the side of this content over here so we would probably put a div inside this div and then use css to make sure that it aligns to the right side or floats to the right for example so just a sneak peek with some CSS, and this is also falls into HTML attributes. So HTML elements have something called attributes, and attributes provide additional information about an HTML element. We've used them previously up top. So for example, href stands for hypertext reference. This is an attribute for the A tag. The image tag has the attribute source, which we can provide a URL to an image, and also has the width and the alt attributes. So just generally speaking, attributes provide additional information about an HTML element. So over here in our div tag, I can simply give it a style attribute and this will define all of the styles that this div, this HTML element should have. So if I wanted to give every single element inside this div a color, a text color of let's just say aqua, notice how all of the text color inside this div, not just one of them, all of them, it changed. Okay, and I can also change the font size as well. Let's just change it to, or on the font size, let's do font family. Calibri. Okay, and that's also going to change as well. And we can also, of course, change the font size by simply doing font size 22 pixels. And again, I'm just giving you a sneak peek. That's why I'm not really explaining too much about it. This is all CSS styling, and we're going to learn more about that in our CSS video hopefully all of this made sense and i didn't want to like go over all i just wanted to go over the basics of html 
Obviously, if you go on W3 Schools, there are a whole bunch of different resources that you can use, not just for HTML, but also CSS. But there's also a whole list of different HTML tags that you can use. Like there's a whole tag list and you can just look at it and you can say, hey, look, why don't I try playing around with some of these? And it'll give you some information about them. It would be a really long video if you were to go over every single one of these tags. So I just wanted to give you guys a basis of them. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.